gymnastic fans and welcome to the NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships coming to you today from West Virginia University Coliseum. It's the Morgantown Regional Finals. I'm Mark Brown along with former Olympian and NCAA champion Sam Pejic, Cal, Michigan, UCLA, Ohio State all had their moments yesterday, Sam. Yeah, absolutely, but we gotta call a spade a spade here. Cal handled their business yesterday. Head coach Justin Howell said they did a good job staying connected and they wanna see their team be aggressively normal tonight. Michigan had some mistakes on beam, but seemed to come back with vengeance on the other three events. And UCLA had some mistakes as well, but there were some championship moments and they're hoping to be here tonight. Ohio State, this is that championship moment for them when they were celebrating, when they realized they knocked BYU out in order to compete in tonight's competition. They're excited to be here tonight. All right, let's take a look at our bracket reaching the regional final, Michigan, Cal, UCLA, and Ohio State. Top two will go on to Nationals in Fort Worth, staying on that road. Now, that means these teams are one step away. And Sam, you have been in the shoes of these gymnasts. What are they feeling right now? Well, the pressure is on, Mark. They're feeling it. I'm feeling it just watching warm-ups here. But not only talking about the pressure, but it's a two-day competition, meaning they're competing twice in one weekend, and not one team in the country has experience doing that this year. So who has the legs, who has the conditioning, who has the strength and the mental stamina to be able to perform well in tonight's competition? That's the question we're hoping to get answered here tonight. All right, well, Cal seemed to answer some questions yesterday. They were very sharp, maybe the sharpest of all the teams to come into today. Yeah, they put a complete meet together yesterday, and they were extremely relaxed from start to finish. And in doing so, the coaches said they kept their focus and their energy inside the bear bubble. That's what they're hoping to see again in tonight. And they're hoping to see a lot more of these stuck landings right here. They did a phenomenal job putting a lot of sticks together, bars, vault, and beam. We're hoping to see it again from Cal tonight. All right, we are ready to go. As you can see, this is what we call our quad box. You will see all events, all gymnasts, complete routines throughout the coverage today from Morgantown. So we will be doing our best to hit as many as we can and give you the key storylines. And one thing I would say here, Sam, is that the way this rotation is working out, we've got the three potential favorites here, starting really on what is the strength for them, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Michigan yesterday was on fire on vault. That's the box in the top left, Natalie Wojcik. She's the junior and she scored a perfect 10 at Big Ten Championships. She's the Big Ten champion and yesterday she stuck it. So you're going to expect some big vaults from this Michigan team. Let's see what she got. Boom. Every single time. And she's only the second competitor up for Michigan. They have a lot of difficulty, so naturally they're starting at an, an advantage with their start values. So Abby High School had the 9.325 on that opening vault for Michigan, so likely that's one that they're going to be looking to lose. We'll wait on Wojcik's score. On the bars, first routine complete from Cal's Nevaeh de Souza who had a 9-9. Solid start there. Yesterday, Nevaeh scored a 9.925, and this is the number one team in the country. I know I said it a lot yesterday, but look how comfortable they swing on the bars. They hit every single handstand, and they've been doing a phenomenal job soaking in those landings, just like Andy Lee there in the top right box. Joey Schweitzer for Ohio State has Already gone for her beam routine. We are waiting that. Colby Miller up next. That's Just Gabby saw Gabby Wilson. Wilson. Yeah, Mark, in that top left box, doing your Chenko one and a half, she was a little bit shy and reminding you that Abby High School scored a 9.375 in the first ball spot. She scored 9.975 in previous meets. So they are really going to want to drop that and put all of these vaults to their feet now. And next up on vault, upper left, 
screen for Michigan, Naomi Morrison, who clocked a 9.875 in her competition yesterday. Nina Schonk is on beam as Andy Lee also clocked a 9-9 on bars for Cal. We're going to be seeing another Yurchenko one and a half from Naomi Morrison. She's a freshman. This is a lot of pressure for a freshman. That's where we saw some of those mistakes yesterday, but no problem from Naomi. She is pumped up about that one. All right, and in the upper right, this is uh, Nina Shanks. Bar's routine. Very nice double layout. They're looking for those stuck landings, but it was clean nonetheless. And we're seeing, Mark, a lot, a long pause in the bottom right with UCLA. And I happened to c catch a little bit of Sakai Wright's floor routine, and she looked like she tripped going into her leap pass. So I'm thinking there's, there's an issue with the start value, and she's going to end up missing a requirement for that floor routine, which is why we're seeing uh, the judges take so long putting up a score here. Mm. Okay, so UCLA, obviously, they are looking for a great performance coming out of the floor because this is one of their best, right? Yeah, absolutely. This They're tied for sixth in the nation on this event. They scored a 49.15 yesterday. Um, they're really icing Emma out here. Emma Andre, she's up next on floor, but she's used to being in that first spot. So I'm hoping that she is taking a big, deep breath. You see her moving her arms. That's what you want to do when you're being iced out by the judges, the coaches standing right by you, keeping you entertained, keeping you relaxed. Michigan uh, now nearly through their entire floor routine. Besides the first one that oh. they'll be looking to drop, but that was a 9.325. What do you see? Sorry to jump in like that. Maya Bordis caught her release move extremely co close. She didn't come off the bar, but she had to do an extra swing. So that means that all three of these top teams have so far made a mistake early on in this competition. My bet is that Cal is going to handle it. It was not a huge mistake, but it was still significant considering their track record on the event. So far, they have scores of 9.9, 9.9, and 9.85, waiting on the Bordis one. Meanwhile, Ohio State's posted two 9.7s on the beam. Let's check out the top left box. Reina Gugino, yesterday she scored a 9.925 on this vault. And I'm not surprised that she over-rotated that mark, especially since they're counting a fall. The worst thing that you could do is to go for a stick and have a silly mistake on that event. So I think she played it safe by taking a step forward. Good for her. All right, so that completes Michigan's rotation on vault as they're just waiting for that last score from Reina Gugina. Top right is balance beam, Alexis Hankins. Two nine sevens for Ohio State. Emma Andres is now looking for a really solid floor team to get things back on track for the Bruins. And nice stuck landing for Ohio State in the top right box. Yep, we haven't been talking too much about them. Of course, they are the non-nationally ranked team that has come on into the regional finals. Yeah, but they were able to knock out somebody in yesterday's competition. And with the top three teams making some mistakes early on, it's, it's not insane to think that they could possibly get up, jump up in the rankings and, and really push the envelope there. And we do have Reina Gugino's score in there, 9.875. So pretty strong ones after the leadoff trouble from Abbey High School.
top left box is Alma Cook for Cal. She swings so beautifully on this event. Difficult dismount. Again, missing a little bit of those sticks that we saw them do so well in yesterday's competition. Now it looks like the Bruins are pretty fired up after that floor routine. Saw Chris Waller out there with the two-handed high five, high 10. Well, I know it's probably too early to be saying this, Mark, but you know, it's never over until the fat lady sings. That's what we always used to say. Um, you only need five scores. You can drop one, and it looks like all three of these teams are uh, thankful for that in this moment. The Maya Borda score has been posted for Cal on the bars. It is a 9.45, so that's the one they'll be looking to drop as Emmy Watterson is the last on bars for Cal. Alma Cook has scored a 9.825. Pretty solid routine for her. Cal, one more to go on the bars. So this is not going to be their top bar score. Alma Cook is used to scoring a lot higher than that, but Emmy Watterson we're about to see here yesterday, in my opinion, should have been a perfect 10 yesterday. She hits all of her handstands. Look at that. She scored a 9.975. Does a great job keeping the rhythm up. Beautiful Van Leeuwen straight up to that handstand position. No form errors yet. Looking for a stuck landing, and she does it again. I asked head coach Justin Howe about it, and he said, believe it or not, she does 10-0 bar routines every single day in the gym, so we actually expect this style of routine more than not. Um, so I'm pulling for her to get that perfect 10 in tonight's competition. All right, beam routine, the final one for Cal. Check that for Ohio, Ohio State, not the final one. Move it a little slower there as it normally does. Schwartzberger lands it, and we will see what that score is. Looking to drop the nine. Three, two, five from Hankins. That's the last Ohio State competitor. And now uh, moving on to the floor, Marzetta Frazier from UCLA. And she is such a natural performer on this event. When I spoke to their floor coach, Don Plangey, he said that she really took the reins after their couple mistakes yesterday on floor and told the entire team hey listen we had trouble adjusting to the floor we got it done it doesn't matter we're going to come in tomorrow and rock it because we're a great floor team so she's really helping to bring confidence to this UCLA team all right Sam Emmy Watterson score is in not a 10 9.95 still pretty good what do they want from her Mark <laughs> Uh, maybe we need to chip in some of the Tuscaloosa judges. There's a few <laughs> tens down there, right? Yeah, there's a four perfect tens so far. I think we're going to see them a little bit later. We'll see how they rack up to uh, Emmy Watterson's bar score. So Frazier from UCLA is done. We'll await her score. Sakai Wright had the 9.575 to get things started for UCLA. Emma Andres banking 9.825 so they'll certainly be looking to drop right score from there Shea Campbell do up next on the floor for UCLA latest scores on beam are in for Ohio State Hankins 9.325 and Jenna Schwartzberger's was 9.825 Ohio State is really looking for two more solid routines and if you guys remember correctly, this is the event that they were able to clinch the victory over BYU to qualify to today's competition. So they should have some confidence from that experience. This is Emma Pritchard on beam. Yesterday, she was able to score a 9.8 on beam to help Ohio State score a 49.175. We 
nice finish from Emma Pritchard for Ohio State on beam. They need one more in the bank in order to not count a fall. And that will go to Ella Hodges. Anchoring this rotation on the beam. Again, that 9.325 from Alexis Hankins is the one they want to drop for sure. 9.7, two of them are the next lowest. Jay Campbell has begun on the right side of your screen, her floor routine for UCLA. She just clinched the Pac-12 floor title along with her teammate Pauline Tratz. Nice double back there. But again, she is a freshman and doing a floor routine two days in a row. That's not something that they practice in the gym. So they're really relying on a lot of adrenaline and that mental stamina here. Shay Campbell, it's all about those little details. She works out of that last pass, and it's a really nice routine for her. Yeah, they Nothing seem like to a love little it. drama. Nothing like a little drama it's this early in the competition for you, Mark. Absolutely. You never know what you're going to get. So much pressure on these young athletes. Ella Hodges on the beam, the final beam competitor for the Buckeyes. Nice back handspring layout series. She had a fall at Big Tens, but was actually the final performer in yesterday's competition to clinch the upset with a 9.875. So she is capable of a big number. Standing gainer layout step out. I love how these Ohio State gymnasts are bringing that unique, those unique elements to these beam routines, even though it's a little more risky. Finishing round off one and a half. That's what we call a college stick, and I'm here for it. Well, you can't help but pull a little bit for Ohio State. A big emotional performance yesterday, and at least through one rotation, they have carried that through. Yeah, they will officially not have to count a, a fall on that first rotation, and that's huge for them. So the only apparatus still in action. UCLA on floor. This is Paulina Trotz. The second to last to go with Nia Dennis in the wings. She's a senior that has been a great leader for this team, and coaches say that's actually why they think her gymnastics has been improving this season. Saved herself from going out of bounds there. And that's a veteran move. She could have stepped forward, but it would have been a one-tenth deduction out of bounds. Good move from Pauline. Finishing nice double back there. And that's a routine that they needed. Similar to Ohio State, they're looking for one more solid score to put in the bank, and they're looking for that from Nia. 
We're going to take a look back at the first couple of tumbling passes for Paulina Trotz. She did a nice job doing clean tumbling right from this first skill there. Double pike finds the landing very easily. One and a half to that front layout combination pass. And you can see steps a little cockeyed to avoid that out of bounds. And we're waiting for that one to post for Paulina Kratz looking to drop the five, the nine point five seven five of Sakai Wright that led off the Bruins floor routine. Now it'll come down to Nia Dennis to put up a big number so they can put that first floor routine in the rearview mirror. Yesterday, she over-rotated her first pass and had to take a step out of bounds. So the key for Nia here is to not try too hard. That sounds silly, but whenever she goes for a perfect routine or a 10.0, or a she ends up taking an out of bounds or over-rotating. So the key for her is to focus on the performance aspect of her routine. UCLA floor in the first rotation. Score as of now, 49.075. But again, that is counting the Sakai Wright 9.575. Dennis is looking to put up a much bigger number. And UCLA looking to move up that scoreboard. We'll see. Yeah, Dennis ready to go. She's so capable second. of a 9-9 plus number here on this floor team but it's all about staying in the moment for her. If she can get the 9-9-9-5, nine, 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 she would be able to push UCLA into second after the first rotation. We'll see. This is that viral floor team called The Culture, and it took six months for them to create this floor team. Speaking to head coach Chris Waller, he said that he got chills the first time he saw it, and it's really a reflection, and watching this routine is kind of like watching a piece of her soul. Looking to put down a very strong routine. She actually only had the 9.6 yesterday. She's looking for one more solid pass here, and she does it. Put the fours up right before that pass, gave her a little extra momentum there, and UCLA is happy at this point. All right, Sam, so I guess uh, we're not going to be saying 9.6 after that one for sure. It's not going to be a 9.6. I'm curious to see what the judges will reward her. It's going to be a good number. All right, we'll get the final number on that and catch you up on everything that's happened in the first rotation and start rotation number two from. Welcome back to the NCAA Gymnastics Championship, Morgantown Regional, getting ready to start the second rotation. But one of the key teams here is Cal and the Bears. Well, they like to have some fun for sure. Let's go mic'd up with Cal. Bear Nation. Can I tell you a pickup line? I would love to hear one. Okay. How much does a polar bear weigh? How much? Enough to break the ice. Hi, my name's Alma. Uh, this is a little slow for me. There it is. That is a beat. Again, you've done hundreds of routines in the gym, hundreds of competitions. This is just one more routine, okay? So I need you to salute, get up there, be confident, be aggressive, take it one thing at a time, trust yourself, okay? Be fierce, you know, you do your best game in your face. Attack it. You know what to do. Come on, babe. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. A lot of 
sometimes people don't realize that gymnasts have a lot of fun in between the competitions. They are fierce, they are focused when they salute, but af off the apparatus, they're actually really silly and goofy. And um, I also, for the record, Mark, next time I need a pep talk, I'm gonna call Nina Shank because that pep talk to Maya Bordas before Beam, that really got me going here. That was uh, awesome. We need more stuff like that, that is for sure. Hey, the first rotation now complete, and it's really tight. Let's get to the highlights. Just one-tenth separates the top three teams. Well, it's a meet early on. Natalie Wojcik and some of the other Michigan gymnasts, Naomi Morrison, Brooks, 9.9, 9.95. We are seeing a ton of good stuff from Michigan despite them having a little mistake in that first spot. Yurchenko, one and a half. This is Cal Nevaeh D'Souza scoring a 9.95. She locked in that stuck landing. And as good of a bar team they are, 49.25 is still a great score, but they were hoping for more. Emmy Watterson, I still think she deserved a 10. She did score a 9.95, so an excellent score for them. And of course, UCLA was on one of their best events. Marzetta Frazier locked in a 9.9, .9. and not to mention a phenomenal job on the performance quality. This is Nia Dennis. She needed a big number to drop that lower score earlier in the lineup. Look there, the ab muscles, the core. She locks it in to save every tenth she has to score a 9.925 to make sure Cal and UCLA are tied going into the second event. And there is uh, Nia Dennis, a fine performance, very uncharacteristic, 9.6 yesterday. And boy, she's uh, got that thrown out and in the trash and back to where she needs to be. So heading into the second rotation now, we've got this tight matchup, of course, Michigan by a tenth over Cal and UCLA, each coming off their strengths in that first rotation, Sam. So is there anything we can draw from this? Is there a, is there a sneaky winner of that first rotation based on what you would expect? Well, Cal and UCLA both scoring a 49-425. Those are not bad numbers, but this is the regional finals. They were both hoping to get a little bit higher, especially on their better events early on. Cal is used to scoring at least a couple tenths higher than that on bars and UCLA. That They know that's an area where they can really get ahead. And so um, I'm curious to, to think if they feel like that was a miss for them or if they are moving on and focusing on the next event. All right, first gymnasts have completed their first routines. UCLA has moved to the vault and Paulina Trotz just put one down. She's done a good job leading off for the Bruins on vault and finding a clean landing. Bottom left-hand corner. Beam. Milan Klausi to lead off for Cal. Yesterday, she scored a 9.8 in that leadoff spot. And you can see her moving through this beam routine really nicely. I'm sure that's a, a big reason of why they want her in this spot. She just looks calm up there. Massive result on bars for Abby High School, 9.9. Nine five to get Michigan's rotation off. Milan Klossy locks in a stuck landing in the bottom left. They actually scored two tenths higher than they did at Pac 12s in yesterday's beam competition, so they're hoping to do that again here today. Carly Bauman now on bars for Michigan, looking to follow up that nine nine five. And this is an important routine for Carly, just with her confidence. It was not her day yesterday. She actually cast it over, and uh, I like to see that she hit that handstand before her dismount, but did not go over. So I'm sure she's relieved to have a do-over today. Bottom right corner, we've got Ohio State on the floor. Brooke Chesney 
first competitor for Ohio State. Brooke Chesney's career best is a 9.925, and those are the kind of numbers Ohio State is looking to get early in this second rotation. Head coach, Ohio State's head coach, Meredith Policivic, said that it was really a team effort from the beginning to the very last routine in order for them to make it to this competition. So they need to start off strong tonight, have fun, and fight for one another. Waiting on that Kendall Poston vault score, Sakai Wright, meanwhile, getting ready for UCLA, their third gymnast in this rotation. And if you caught Kendall Poston's 10-0 uh, start value vault right before this, it was actually a lot better than the first nights of competition. She had her chest up nicely, it should be a higher score. Bottom left corner, beam, Nevea D'Souza for Cal, following up uh, Milan Clausi's 985. Can't spin layout series for Nevea in the bottom left. Coaches say that she is such an asset to this team, but her biggest attribute is that her teammates know she's going to do her job and compete strongly no matter what. And Mark, especially in this pressure situation like tonight's competition, they need to rely on athletes like that. So two scores from Michigan on the bars. 995 from high school, 99 from Bauman. We are waiting for Gabby Wilson's score to come in. Brooke Chesney hits a 9-8 on the floor for Ohio State. Gonzalez, Savannah Gonzalez on the floor now. Something that you're going to notice when watching these Ohio State floor routines in the bottom right is their performance quality. We talk a lot about their performance with UCLA, with Cal, and with Michigan, but Ohio State, they have some very creative, unique, entertaining floor routines as well. I'm going to draw your attention to the bars at the moment where Nicoletta Kulos about ready to go for Michigan. Uh, Sam, they are on a real run. First three scores in, 995, 990, 995. And a nice handstand to get things going. Nicoletta yesterday scored a 9.9, .9, so things are moving in the right direction for them. Wow. Nice handstand hold for this dismount. All she needs is that stuck landing. It was a little hot, but that was the biggest deduction in the whole routine. They are on fire. Yeah, when you're looking at dropping a 9-9, you know you're doing pretty well, huh? It's not too bad, not too shabby. <laughs> When I spoke to their head coach, Bev Plocky, she said that bars we know is a strong event for us. And she gives all the credit right there to the associate head coach, Scott Sherman, said he does an amazing job, but they know that they, if they want to get through regionals and contend, they need to bring the stuck landings. Cal's beam going pretty well, 9925 for D'Souza. Now Andy Lee on the beam. Nia Dennis just did that huge Yurchenko layout full. Yesterday she scored a 9.925 and I expect that score, even a 9.95, which would be a perfect number for Yurchenko layout full. She's having a good day. All right, so we'll wait on that score. So far, nothing better than 9.85 on vault for UCLA in this rotation. Shea Campbell's coming up next for the Bruins. Top right corner of your screen, the Bars and Michigan. Kulos just got a 9.875, so that's the lowest score of the four in for the Wolverines. 
big difficulty dismount. Stretched full out dismount from Sierra Brooks. She locked in a 9.925 yesterday. Wow. You were right about Nia Dennis, a 9-9 for the best score on vault today for UCLA. Shea Campbell just finishing up. That and rotation. she found that landing as well. So things are looking up for the Bruins on vault. They need those big numbers from the back half of their lineup. Michigan's rotation on bars. One more to go. The Sierra Brooks score in 9-9-5. Natalie Wojcik coming up. Vault is complete for this rotation. Still waiting on the Shea Campbell score, but we are now down to the three box. We see Natalie Wojcik in that top left box, and this is a really good event for her. But really, does she have a bad event? I mean, her gymnastics is so clean. She doesn't have any built-in deductions. Let's see if she can lock in these handstands. Huge release move to start off that bar routine. Brings it back nicely. Another good handstand. She's looking for this stretched double layout. Easy peasy for Natalie Wojcik. They got to be pumped up. That is just an amazing run in this rotation on bars. We'll await that score. Figures to be very high. The low score right now, Nicoletta Kulos at 9.875. Kayana George on the beam for Cal at the moment on the left side of your screen. Natalie Wojcik score should top that 9875. Man, that is a dream to be able to drop a 9.875 in your lineup. Nice finish for Kiana George on beam. Still two more competitors to go for Cal on beam, Maya Bordas and Emmy Watterson. Bars and vaults are done for the moment. Still waiting on the last Michigan bars score. Wojcik, which we expect to be very good. Alexis Hankins getting ready for Ohio State for her floor routine right side of your screen. Let's talk about Maya Bordis right there. And you see Nina Shank giving her that pep talk that we heard in that mic'd up series. Really big group with empowerment and lifting themselves up. But when you talk about Maya Bordis, she's part of the Pac-12 GPAC position. That stands for Gymnasts for Peace, Action, and Change. There's a couple, one or two gymnasts from each Pac-12 gymnastics program that are part of this. Marzetta Frazier and Caliani Steele uh, are also part of this from UCLA. And it's a student athlete organization that strives to create an authentic space for fellow student athletes by encouraging diversity and inclusion. It's something that is new and they are extremely proud to represent that. The Wojcik score is in 9.95. So indeed they will be dropping Michigan, the 9.875. So incredible run with four 9.95s as well as a 9-0. Clean beam routine so far.
nice set for Maya Bordis, the junior from Cal. They're screaming for a 10 over there, Mark. I don't know if we're going <laughs> to see it tonight. I was hoping to see a 10, and I don't know. Well, we're gonna, we have seen a 9-9-7-5. We just didn't know it. Natalie Wojcik's score has been boosted up to 9-9-7-5. She was last on bars for Michigan, so uh, they, they'll take that update to be sure. What a rotation for Michigan. A 49.725. That is huge. Gymnastics fans watching this, I'm sure your mouth is open with how much in awe because actually you're used to seeing that from Cal. So I know they're probably a little frustrated, even though I know they're in their bear bubble. So they're probably not thinking about it right now, but they're usually known number one in the country as the bar team. And here Michigan comes in. They're still a good bar routine, but they really showed them up tonight. Just ready to begin her floor routine, Claire Gagliardi, following Alexis Hankins, who scored 9775. Cal's Maya Bordas score is in 9-9-2-5 on the beam. Emmy Watterson finishing up the rotation for Cal. Something that I've noticed watching Cal on beam, not just today, but yesterday as well, is they just look so relaxed. You could see actually she was pretty crooked on that series and made a slight adjustment and handled it and kind of brushed it off like it was no big deal. And that's the mark of a really consistently confident team. And you see their head coach, Liz Crandall Howell, celebrating over there. Lots of fist pumps. How important is that energy that the coach brings to meets? So important for the coach to kind of start that culture throughout the team. Uh, but you have to know, too, they're used to a ton of fans. And even though there's some in the arena, there's not enough to bring the energy. So I think even more than ever, they're trying to generate that momentum, that energy from inside of each team. And now we're down to one. Claire Galliardi just finishing up her routine. There will be one more Buckeye to go. Jojo Warga will close it out in just a moment. And hopefully you caught that mark. That was the Pac-Man routine. I don't know how well <laughs> you do at Pac-Man, but I was a big mm. Game Boy player myself. Yeah, so Pac-Man goes back a long way, and luckily so do I. Although I was never very good at any type of video game. But Pac-Man was, I think, simple enough for me to be, you know, somewhat decent at. All right, I'll take it. Last performer of the second rotation, Jojo Varga from Ohio State. Their high score so far on the floor has been 9-8, which was Brooke Chesney in the leadoff spot. And looking to drop a 9-6-5. I just can't get over that Michigan bar score. And we talk about this being a drama-filled meet right from the beginning. There's a lot of the line at first. And then for Michigan to put up a 49.725, and we just got the word in, it is a school record. So make it history in tonight's competition as well. 199, three 995s, and a 9975. They're going to want to put that in their pocket, um, assuming that they qualify to NCAA championships to uh, repeat that.
Nice first tumbling pass for Jojo Warga, the freshman from Ohio State. When we spoke to head coach Meredith Paula Civic yesterday, she was almost in tears. She was so emotional that her gymnasts were able to peak at the right time. She could not be more proud of them. Yeah, and regardless of the outcome today, they've made their mark. They've been a presence for sure in Morgantown. Anytime you can clinch an upset, and look at the fight, even there, she could have easily sat down that last pass, but she fought through it. Great job from JoJo. So we'll be waiting on that score, but for now we will take a quick break. We'll wrap up second rotation. Morgantown Regional from West Virginia University Coliseum, the NCAA Gymnastics Championship, is on the road to Fort Worth. Two teams of the four left competing here in Morgantown will be going on to the Nationals. But first, it's always been the measuring stick, the perfect 10. We've had some in the regionals across the country. Anastasia Webb from Oklahoma, a phenomenal senior athlete. Her gymnastics looks so easy, I'm not surprised. Look at those lines, and she locks in a nice stick. This is Makari Doggett from Alabama. She's just an underclassman, and she's done a solid job competing for Alabama, one of their iciest competitors, and brings in tens when it's necessary. This is Luisa Blanco, another one of those standout Alabama gymnasts. She is beautiful to watch. Her extension, her dance, her performance quality, and her dismounts. When she locks in that stick, it's beautiful. Trinity Thomas, one of the favorites uh, gymnasts across the NCAA this year. She came back from an injury, and this is how she responds. A perfect 10 on the uneven bars. Florida is happy with that. All right, taking a look at the Athens Regional. There are four regionals going on today, and in the finals, it will come down to Florida, Minnesota. Denver and the unseated Wolfpack of NC State. That in Athens, Georgia, at the home of the University of Georgia. This is also a saucy. tough. This is a tough regional. They're all tough regionals, uh, but those top three teams in each of these regionals should be in contention. They're all good enough. So it's all who has the best day. You cannot make a mistake here in these regional finals. LSU, Utah, Arizona State, Kentucky. It's a fierce race out there. All right, and Denver having the lead in that Athens regional through two rotations. Now, we're done with two rotations in Morgantown as well, Sam, and it was an unbelievable performance from Michigan. Take us through the highlights. There was a lot of good things we saw in this round. I know that UCLA coming into this vault, they actually used a Cardi B song for inspiration today. Nia Dennis, if it's up, then it's stuck, and that's what Nia Dennis and Shea Campbell did with these Yurchenko layout folds. Lots of height off the table and easy to the ground. Cal had a really calm and relaxing performance on beam. And Nevaeh D'Souza locks in another clean routine and a stuck landing for them. And of course, Maya Bordis. Really beautiful to watch, stretched, and all smiles for Cal. And Michigan, this was what brought me to excitement this entire rotation. They have a school record that was just been broken, 49.725. They locked in three, 9.95. And 
you haven't seen her yet, but Natalie Wojcik scored a 9.975. Mark, I still wanted the 10. I thought one of those could be it, but there's still a couple more events, right? Absolutely. It looks like we might not get to see one of those, although we do have two rotations to go, but these judges in Morgantown have been very, very tough. So we're halfway home here on the road to Fort Worth. What are your impressions here? What's the status now after two rotations? I don't think anybody's in the clear. I mean, Michigan is making a run for it right now. They should feel the most quote unquote safe, but they're on beam. We all know anything can happen on that event. They had some trouble on beam yesterday, so I'm interested to see how they respond there. But in terms of California and UCLA, they still have to show up on these next two events. All right, in Ohio State, uh, they are on vault, and they'll be doing that with just the five, so there'll be no one to drop, no low score to drop. How much added pressure is that for the Buckeyes? This is a lot of pressure for the Buckeyes, only having five competitors, but out of all the events to do this, vault is the best one. They just need to put them to their feet. Starting off strong with Yurchenko, layout full, hop back, but like I just said, she put it to her feet. On the bars, Jay Campbell just finished the opening routine for UCLA. Frida Esparza will be next. That vault is down for Ohio State. Morgan Lowe, Jenna Swarthers, Truber will be next. Floor, Grace Quinn is underway for Cal, bottom right corner of your screen. This is a good event for Cal. They're tied for sixth in the country on floor and scored a 49.4 yesterday. Grace Quinn usually starts things off on a good note for them. She's doing well so far. So only two of these four, the top two, will advance to the Nationals in Fort, Fort Worth in a couple of weeks. Michigan and Cal, that's that battle, at least for now it appears, for the second and final spot and entering the rotation. Sam, just one-tenth separating them. So this is a massive third rotation for both teams. In 2019, that's when they first debuted this new format, and I actually was commentating at Michigan for their regional championships and they got beaten out by Alabama in this format and let me tell you you know that's in the back of their mind they want this Gabby Wilson second on beam for Michigan after Carly Bowman's 985 to lead off Shea Campbell also a 9.85 to start things on bars for UCLA. Gabby Wilson in that bottom left. Big wobble from that series. So they're going to have to count that 9.75 excuse me, 9.85 from Carly Bauman. The bottom left beam, Michigan. And Wilson will await her score. UCLA is on bars. Cal and UCLA very tight. Could be and is looking like the battle for the second and final spot in the Nationals. Spars is score 9-8-5 on bars for UCLA, so we'll pair them. 
that's a relief for Frida Esparza. She was one of those athletes that unfortunately casted over yesterday. So it always feels good to have an opportunity to right your mistakes the second day, and it worked out well for Frida. You know, UCLA and Michigan are really neck and neck here. One-tenth difference coming into this event is not a big one. So both teams are trying to pull ahead here. And once again, floor is Cal, where Grace Quinn has a 9.85. Maya Bordas on floor at the moment. That is bottom right. And bars for UCLA. Top right. This is Savannah Coyman looking for another hit routine for UCLA on bars. Shy on that last handstand. You know, sometimes when you see lots of people casting over, you have a tendency to get tight, play a little bit short. Saw that a little bit with Savannah Coyman there. And Bordas has finished her floor routine. We'll await that score. Meanwhile, the vault scores are coming in for Ohio State. Nothing below a 9-8. And they are down to their fifth and final competitor, Claire Galliardi. Michigan's got a 9-8-5 and a 9-7-5 on beam from Bauman and Wilson. Go to the top left here. Claire Gagliardi from Ohio State as they finish up their rotation on vault. They want to lock in one more clean vault. Over rotate, excuse me, there's one more athlete after this. We had a lineup change here. All right, so now down to the three box. Still waiting Let's for that last at bars. Ohio State floor. This is Sarah Julius on bars. She has beautiful lines, nice stretched hips. This is a huge release move. Straddled Jaeger there. Nice handstand positions. If UCLA still wants to stay in this competition, they are going to need to get some high scores. This is looking pretty good so far. 9.75, the low at the moment. See what Julius can put on the board. I think that was the best bar routine I have seen her do as a UCLA Bruin. We asked for big numbers, and I think they're going to deliver. That should be a great score for Sarah. Nora Flatley and Marzetta Frazier still to go on bars for UCLA. We'll keep an eye out for that score. Meanwhile, on floor for Cal, they've got a 9.85 and a 9.825. This is Nevea D'Souza. Nevaeh has been an incredible leader beyond gymnastics. Coaches say that she is such a great example for everybody on the team. They felt like floor was an event that was still improving throughout the season because they started later. Floor endurance comes last. So they felt like it was a little slow to gain that confidence, but they're in a good place now. Nora Flatley in her routine on bars for UCLA, and she's a story in and of itself. She's missed most of the season. This is only her third competitive bar routine this entire year. Some could say she's lacking experience. Some could say she is fresh. Let's see what she does today. 
almost went over on that handstand, but she is a veteran competitor, was on the national team, standout athlete, was able to make it a hit routine. And you were right about the Sarah Ulias routine. 9-9 nine, nine for UCLA, their best score so far. We'll wait for the flatly to come in. Marzetta Frazier will finish things up on bars. UCLA hopes strongly. Lauren Farley's beam score has come in for Michigan at 9-8-5. Sierra Brooks is done there as well, awaiting her score. Michigan had the nice little lead beginning the third rotation in a really tight battle between Cal, currently on floor, and UCLA on bars. We have three phenomenal athletes getting to go. I'm struggling to figure out who to watch. I think it's a blessing and the curse <laughs> of having all of these routines at once. I wish you could pause one of them so you don't miss a thing. This is Milan Klossi in the bottom. She has amazing tumbling, contemporary dance. In the top right, Natalie Wojcik is the reigning NCAA beam champion. And of course, Marzetta Frazier has been very productive on this event. Sierra Brooks score has come in on beam for Michigan, 9.95. Marzetta Frazier, she's almost robotic lately. She has scored 9.95 yesterday. She tied for as the Pac-12 bar champion. She's a three-time All-American on bars. I think it looks too easy for her. Trouble on beam for Michigan there. She was able to save it. That is Wojcik. Really uncharacteristic from her. UCLA done with their rotation on bars. The Frazier score is in at 9.95. Natalie's able to hang on to that dismount. You know she is bummed about that on beam because that is one of her best events. In a battle for second between UCLA and Cal. When you don't get a big number from Wojcik, how much could that come into play? They had a pretty big lead coming into this rotation. They were starting to separate themselves, but that gap seems to be closing just a little bit here on beam. I'm interested to see how Cal is able to finish off this rotation. I think they have the potential to pull ahead if they get some big numbers in the back half of this lineup. So waiting on that Wojcik score, they'd be looking to drop a 9.75. Not sure that's the case anymore. Score coming in at 9.70. So Wojcik won't be able to drop it. It'll be down to Abby High School. Milan Clausi's number has come in on floor, 9.9. Andy Lee next up for Cal. You we talk about Michigan having a little bit of trouble, but it's just one, two tens here or there. When they are able to put up a 49.725, they have a little bit of breathing room coming from that bars rotation. Andy Lee. From Cal, floor routine on right side of your screen, just underway. She's a freshman. She actually hurt both of her ankles right before Christmas, so she wasn't even training leg events until a lot later.
chance to celebrate for Abby High School on beam. It always feels good to get through that beam rotation. I don't think it's the best we've seen from them this year, but I think they survived it. And we'll wait the final score. Looking to drop a 9-7 is Michigan UCLA. Rotation is complete with a 49-375 for their bar rotation. Nice finish for Andy Lee here. Beautiful dance, clean lines on her tumbling. This is going to score well for Cal. They talk a lot about scores building, and you can see right here for Cal, 985, and it's building all the way to these 9999 pluses that we're going to see here in the back half of the lineup. Here's the combination pass, front layout full to a front layout. Beautifully done. Now, Kiana George will be the final competitor of this third rotation, Cal's last floor gymnast in what is a very tight battle between UCLA and Cal for second place. And that is where the cut line is. You don't continue on the road to Fort Worth to the Nationals unless you get in the top two in the regional. And who better to be in this position than Kiana George? She scored a 9.95 on this floor team yesterday. And she's a regular season All-American on floor. Not to mention a senior. She's had this experience competing in the regional finals before. It's been great numbers on this rotation, or good to great. Lowest score is a 9.825. Kiana George is looking to drop that one and drop a big number. Starting off strong with a difficult front double full to punch front. This routine just makes me smile. You can't help it. She looks like she's having so much fun out there. Finish for Kiana George on floor. So that is it for rotation number three. It all comes down to the fourth rotation. Two spots in Fort Worth. The road to Fort Worth. We've come to the end of the road to Morgantown. Now the fourth rotation coming up in Morgantown and this is a look at things in Michigan, Cal, UCLA and Ohio State. Four here, only two can go on to the Nationals. And as we finish up that third rotation, we're starting to see a little bit of gaps between first, second and third. Let's talk about some of the highlights that we saw there from the third rotation. Well, Ohio State was on vault, and Lexi Edwards was a highlight for me. She scored a 9.85 on this Yurchenko layout full. Very clean in the air to a nice landing. Michigan, Sierra Brooks scored a huge 9.95, and I love it that she's able to do it with this difficult double-pack dismount. That makes me smile. 
UCLA needed some big numbers, and the freshman, Sarah Julius, came in clutch with a 9.9. She has great handstands, nice lines, and was able to lock in that dismount. Marzetta Frazier has been so consistent and aggressive on this event. She scored another 9.95. It's almost getting too easy for her. And Cal was on floor. I always love watching their performances. Milan Klossi scored a 9.95. Andy Lee with a 9.925. Beautiful dance from start to finish, and Kiana George finishes things off with a 9.95. Their scores are rising throughout the competition. Exactly what coaches Justin and Liz Howell wanted to do. Things are looking up for Cal. And if they are looking up for Cal, they are looking to be a problem, perhaps, for UCLA third entering this final rotation. Of course, that puts their streak of reaching the last 13 NCAA championships, which is the longest streak in history, very much in doubt. So with that, UCLA on beam and Cal on vault. How's this thing going to go, Sam? Well, you know, it's it's quite all ironic that the event that's been their biggest nemesis this season is now the roadblock to reaching their goals and qualifying for the NCAA championship. So they're going to need a big performance. They're going to need to peak right here on beam. It is helpful that Nora Flatley is back in the lineup, and they actually have a lineup change from yesterday. Samantha Sakti is out of the lineup, and Nia Dennis is going to go in for her place. So we'll see if this change is going to be a positive one for them. They are certainly hoping so. Sakti had you know, just a, a nightmare of a performance, unfortunately, for her a couple of falls and a very low score. So they've made that change as you mentioned and we'll see what Nia Dennis can do to improve on that. So Michigan is on the floor. That is the bottom right looking to keep that advantage that they have. 148.550 the top score. Cal in second 148.375 and in third at the moment UCLA on beam 148.150 Cal for now is in that Nationals spot along with Michigan. Can UCLA come back? It will take an extraordinary performance, as uh, Sam has pointed out. It's not their strength, the beam for UCLA. But here we go. It all comes down to this. And you know, Mark, I misspoke earlier, so I have to correct myself. That competition two years ago at Michigan Michigan actually clinched it, not Alabama. I misspoke, but they still know the feeling because they were so close to not qualifying. They are ready to clinch this early here on floor. Now it's interesting here on vault for Cal. We're seeing Natalie Sadigi, and actually she was a late add to the lineup yesterday. The coaches said that she was sticking 75% of her warmups and just nailing the vault. So they actually put her in place of Maura, Maya Bordis. So it's not surprising that she gets things going with the stuck landing there for Cal. All right, that looks pretty promising for Cal in their opening vault. Andy Lee will go second. On the bars, Ohio State's first score is in 9.725 for Pritchard. Kendall Poston for UCLA in the bottom left is finishing things up. And they're looking for some big scores here on beam if they want to stay in this competition. Unfortunately, I just got word that she had a fall. I'm getting tunnel vision. There are so many amazing gymnasts to watch here in this competition. So some pressure now, even more so on UCLA. Five more beam routines to go. Pretty much got to nail them all. We're assuming that post and score will be low with the fall. 
Sadigi score for Cal is in, and it's pretty good. 9-8-5. Well, good things are happening for Michigan on floor. I saw Carly Bauman have no problems with the element that she fell on yesterday, so things are looking smooth for them on that event. Nia Dennis for so, UCLA had to handle the pressure from the mistakes on floor. Let's see if she could do it again here in this rotation. Vault, cow, upper left corner of your screen. Beam UCLA, bottom left. The fight for the second and final spot in Nationals coming from Morgantown. That was Nina Schunk up there in that top left. They're putting them to their feet. Andy Lee's fault for Cal. Came in at 9-9. Waiting on Shanks. Kendall Poston's first score, 9-0-5. So they'll be looking to drop that. See what Dennis can do about it right now. That can't spring layout. Ooh, big wobble there, but hangs on to it. That was sheer willpower bringing it back on the beam. Shanks vault got a 985, so Cal pushing forward. The solid rotation. Kiana George up next. Good Yurchenko layout full in the top left from Kiana George. I asked the Cal coaches, what's the key for the vault team? And she said, landing. She said, power is there. We have done so many drills in order to find the landings. This team has really taken ownership and knowing that they need to improve in that area. So this is an event that we should see higher score than they got yesterday. Waiting on the Kiana George vault score for Cal. Nevea D'Souza next. George clocks in with a 9.85. So very solid in a rotation where they absolutely have to be. Cal is looking good. Meanwhile, we await the beam score for Nia Dennis. Mark Zeta Frazier will be next for UCLA and beam. Top left, Yurchenko layout full to a stuck landing. She had a little bit momentum coming out of it, but I think she showed enough control there, Nevaeh D'Souza, they're feeling good on vault. And that's going to be done pretty quick. Milan Clausi will be the last one. So Cal will post a number. And UCLA will know what that is for their last few beam competitors. The question is, does UCLA get out of the Bruin bubble and take a look? Well, head coach Chris Waller said that's what happened at Pac-12s. They were paying attention to the other teams, looking at the scores, and they know that doesn't do well for them. So they're looking for them to finish strong here on beam no matter what happens in today's competition. Clausy is ready to go. The last vault for Cal. She's going to be doing a Yurchenko one and a half in the top left. Really nicely done just to hop forward. It's always nice to be the first ones done in a competition, especially when you perform well. And they certainly did. Marzetta Frazier now finishing up her beam routine. We'll cut it down to the three box. Nia Dennis's was 9725. 
So this is looking like a big swing towards Cal in the fourth rotation, at least so far. So Marzetta. Pretty happy with her performance. They really need a big score and maybe a little bit of a miracle here. Nora Flatley, They've Jay struggled. Campbell, and Nicole Shapiro coming up. They've struggled on beam throughout this season. So I think for them, focusing on one routine at a time, Marzetta gaining her confidence. She's just a junior. So she will be a really big asset to the team next year on beam on bars it really in the all around and of course getting nora flatley back here it brings a swagger to this ucla team so cal's vault number as a team 49 375 they dropped one of their three nine eight five so that was a very solid rotation for cal with a lot riding on it see head coach Michigan's head coach Bev Plocky there talking to Sierra Brooks they look relaxed they look loose they look like they're just having a good time there on floor Strong series for Nora Flatley in the top right to get things going for her routine. Nice side aerial. She scored a 9.875 yesterday on beam and I actually thought it was slightly low looking very similar to this routine. Finishing back handspring one and a half. And it looks like they're in their Bruin bubble celebrating. <laughs> Those championship moments, those national champ natty routines, natty quality skills is what Chris Waller always calls it. I like to see that. Shay Campbell will be up next on beam floor. We got a few more to go. Sierra Brooks in the middle of hers for Michigan. Sierra Brooks finishing strong on floor here. You gotta wonder if they are keeping track of the scores. So far, 9875 and 299 for Michigan in their first three floor routines. And we're getting word now from our stellar mathematicians that Cal will indeed clinch already and that UCLA and Ohio State are now locked out. We talk about California being an extremely consistent team. They scored a 197.75. Yesterday they scored a 197.725. So it's really impressive that Head coach Justin Howell was correct. What you see is what you get. They train like that every day. Shea Campbell on the beam, no doubt not knowing about the numbers at the moment, just trying to do her best routine. She's competed a ton this year for UCLA as a freshman, and nonetheless, this is such great experience for her to compete under this kind of pressure two days in a row 
She's done very well this weekend. I'm excited to watch her the next three years. She's going to be a standout, a name you're going to want to remember, Mark. Great stuff there. Something to build on for the Bruins, for sure. Though technically, Michigan, who has been in the lead here entering the fourth rotation, still a couple of floor routines to go, but already clocking in with three 9.9s and a 9.875. So though Cal is the first to officially clinch by the numbers, Michigan more than likely barring disaster will be at the top of this list by the end of this fourth rotation. And I bet Cal, excuse me, I bet Michigan is gaining a lot of confidence for this too. They've had some strange, uncharacteristic mistakes on floor and we're not seeing that in today's competition, which means they are peaking at the right time. This is Gabby Wilson finishing up her floor routine and the magic number for her to clinch. Advancing, 9-4. So things are looking good for her on yes. floor. No major mistakes that I'm seeing so far. It should absolutely be higher than a 9.4 on floor. So that should do it. And of course, they still have another gymnast to go. Natalie Wojcik does Michigan on floor. Nicole Shapiro finishing up her beam routine for UCLA. Chloe Campbell and Nora Flatley both had nine nines. I'm wondering if they're going to still compete Natalie Wojcik. My guess is yes, but she's chalking up right there. I'm sure she wants to compete. But in terms of saving your body for the rest of the postseason, I'm wondering if they thought about only doing five considering they're a lock in the NCAA championship so far. Well, that's an interesting question. We'll see what they do. Michigan's floor routine, the lowest number in is 9875 as Gabby Wilson's score is about to populate. Wow, it's fantastic. 995. Could this be another record breaking event for Michigan? What a day. That Gabby Wilson 995 more than enough to clinch for Michigan. Michigan, I noticed, changed their lineups again here today. So maybe this is the secret sauce, the secret recipe for them. This is the middle pass that's been giving Natalie a little bit of trouble. She just did the punch front to stag jump, so they changed it again. Good to see Natalie getting those numbers in here on floor, getting a little bit more confidence on this event. She's so talented. All right, so they did not let her have 
the rotation off. Natalie Wojcik looking to put the cherry on top for Michigan. They have advanced, and there is only a question now is will they have a new program high score? Right now, a 198.075 with a 9.875 as the one they'd be looking to drop. Did Natalie Wojcik do that, and did she do it enough? to get looks the like new she, record. Looks like she just needs a 9.925. That was pretty good. My guess is that she did. So UCLA, Nicole Shapiro finished uh, things up on beam with a 9.775. And they were able to drop the post and score. But this will be a, a tough pill to swallow for the Bruins. Absolutely. They came in here wanting to advance to the national championships. They wanted to peak at the right time, but it wasn't in the cards for them tonight. They had uh, little mistakes here and there. And of course, Michigan had a record breaking competition. California did their job again and UCLA, unfortunately, will not be advancing to the NCAA championships this year. Well, Michigan, they put down some unbelievable numbers on the bars, and that's what really got their rotation and their event underway. They did an amazing performance. It's hard to keep up with a team that is setting records on events like Michigan. Not only did they set a school record, but it's the highest ever bar score in an NCAA championship event, regionals or finals. They came to play. Natalie Wojcik finishes things off with a 9.975. They're in a good place heading into the NCAA championships. And congratulations to them. An outstanding performance. Getting better as the season goes on. And they win the Morgantown region. They are head heading of course, to Fort Worth. And we have Michigan head coach Bev Clocky on with us right now. Coach, I guess the only question is, how are you feeling? Your girls did an unbelievable job today. I'm so proud of them and the improvement that we made from last night. I think last night is when we had more of the jitters. Tonight, we just put it all out there, trusted in our hard work and effort that we put into the gym. And the girls responded amazingly well. It was phenomenal. I'm so proud of them. Congrats, Bev. Record-breaking bar score. What clicked for you guys tonight on that event? You know, um, we have historically had a very good bar squad, and it was, you know, very evident tonight. Just They were just on, hitting handstands and sticking to dismounts. And again, just believing in themselves, uh, not questioning. They were just being aggressive. Where do you hope to see improvements? I mean, 198-1 is a huge team score. Where do you fix anything heading into the NCAA championships? Well, believe it or not, we didn't stick as many vaults tonight. I think there's still room for improvement there. I would, I would wrap bars up and take it um, with no questions asked. Um, still a, a couple of wobbles on beam that we want to clean up a little bit, be a little bit more aggressive there. And I was really proud of the way that we finished on floor as well. Well, phenomenal All right, coach, performance from start to finish. Congratulations. We look forward to seeing you in Fort Worth. Thank you. All right, so we have half the field set right now for the NCAA Gymnastics Championships in Fort Worth. And, of course, you'll be able to see those here on ESPN2 for the semifinals. And then the final will be on ABC Michigan. Cal coming out of Morgantown. Florida and Minnesota, both and all of them have their tickets punched. And, you know, Sam, as we look back on this Morgantown region, you've seen some tremendous things. What are you taking away from this? 
There was a lot of phenomenal gymnastics this weekend. Ohio State had an upset we saw yesterday. We saw some records, school records being broken across the board. All you can take from this is the level of gymnastics is improving across the country, and it's getting harder and harder to punch your ticket to the NCAA championships, but all that more rewarding for Michigan and Cal tonight. Great performance. It sure was. And Sam, it's been great working with you. Your joy and your expertise for this great sport of women's gymnastics comes through loud and clear. Morgantown Regional now in the books. Michigan first, Cal second. Both will be in Fort Worth for the 2021 National Championship. It has been a fantastic regional in Morgantown for Sam Pejic and our entire crew. I'm Mark Brown. So long, everybody.